Hello, my name is Nuno, and I am here to share with you my journey from mediation to entrepreneurship. Conflict of interest. I am a surgeon working in a public hospital of the Portuguese national healthcare system, and I am the founder and CEO of SurgeonMate. Everything started when I went to South Africa to make my trauma exchange. There are some things that you don't usually see in Europe. At this time, I thought, how will I ever tell my colleagues what I'm seeing here? How can I remember everything in detail, in perfect sharp detail? This is amazing. I mean, technically and scientifically speaking, that was overwhelming. The guys are just amazing. They can save people's lives that you can't even imagine. So this was the very beginning and the very ide first idea I had on, as an interpreter. I thought, what if I record surgeries? Then I can immortalize that moment and I can share it with the medical community. And by that, I mean, I can review what I've done. I can share it with my senior colleagues and I can even share it with the junior residents or even medical students. And this for sure improves the learning experience, the performance of the surgeon and the quality of the surgery. So back in South Africa in 2014, I thought, do they ship these things for, to South Africa? Where can I buy it? Is, it? is it available? Where is the shop? I want to buy it. I want to do it. After a deep research on the market, I found out that actually there was no such a product. So knowing that this idea could become something, I gathered my team and we submitted a patent to create surgeon-made system. And there we were. The basic concept of surgeon-made vision, smart glasses for surgeons, was rising. We carry on our work, and this is actually the first photo of our very first proof of concept. You can see the PPE, personal protective equipment, smart, just glasses to protect surgeons from splashes, to which we added the camera and a microphone, both being connected to a Raspberry Pi would allow us to take the system into the operating room and to create something that I later understood the importance of it, which is validation. You need to validate your idea to actually get to know if that idea is first a good idea and if it can become a product. The outcomes were just amazing. The, I promise the outcomes were amazing. The surgeons were so excited when they see us getting, getting into the OR with this device, they were amazed. Anyway, we, with this validation, we understood all the needs that the smart classes would need to have to become a product. And we carry on our developments until we reach the functional prototype. The cost effectiveness at this time was not actually great for us. And we were spending a lot of money. And actually, at this time, I thought, okay, if you have a good idea that can become a good product and you have clients, they say that you can look for investors for investment and you can create a product. There you go. So I thought, okay, let's start. First thing they ask you is, how do you monetize your idea? Have you done your business model? And I am so confused at this stage. Uh, as a surgeon, you get to know your value to save lives, right? But you have any, you have no idea what's the value of a product that you are creating, and it doesn't exist. So I asked, I genuinely ask them, how can I, how can I continue with this? How, what, what should I do next? What's the next step? So they tell, they told me you have to build your business model, and you have first. First things first, you have to make your business model canvas. And I was so confused. I was really very confused because business, business is really not a thing that they teach you uh, at the medical sc school. You just, you have to learn. You have to learn. I thought, what do you do on a medical life? You go back home and you read and you study. That's what I did. So to become professional, they said, you have to analyze through the scope all the details which we did, I promise you we did. And we made all the checklists. At this time, I was working with my team because I wouldn't be able to do this without them. It's actually something I've learned in entrepreneurship is that you can have a good idea that can become a good product, but if you don't have the team with different expertise, then you will go nowhere. So altogether, we made all the checklists, all the tick lists on all of it. And first thing, what's the name? What's the brand? You have to create a company. And I was, a company? That means there are a couple of words there, like CEO and being the manager. And, and I was, okay, naming. What's the name? They said it has to be something so sonant, so imponent that people will always remember. But 
okay, surgeon mate, will it sound good? Isn't it too restrictive? Because people will always think about surgeons. But then we looked back and actually found out surgeon mate was a, a former uh, rank in the Royal Navy. Actually, there was a man following the doctor in the ships and taking notes of everything that was happening. And this would fit wonders to, to what we wanted to do. So surgeon mate was there. Okay, this is good. Now we have the first thing. The first thing. So they said, okay, now you have to define what is the problem. And when you come back, give me numbers. And numbers. I thought numbers. Then you go to a lot of accelerating programs and whatever, whatever mentorship sessions. And they tell you, give them big numbers and preferably talk about millions, not just thousands, but millions. So all of us together, we looked at the problem and we found out that actually a resident in training gets to delay surgery by 50 minutes and the rest is just math. You can put it on an Excel sheet and it will make all the, the, the math for you. But we got to millions and I was happy. But then I thought, okay, let's use human language because as a surgeon, this doesn't make any sense for me. Like 50 minutes, 300 million consultations. No, 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 no. We have to make this proper. So analyzing, we understood, okay, the problem is that learning surgery is a very complex process and makes us spend a lot of time in the operating room, actually excessive time in the operating room. And that does have impact. And this, is, this, this was the moment I understood social impact because you need to create something and that good idea that you might have although you have all the issues monetization, but it will only thrive if it actually has some meaning and if it, it makes a difference. We want to, and I can talk for myself and I thank all the Surgeon Mate team, we want to leave the world, even if it's just a tiny little better than what we found. So at this time, having fi uh, found, finding the impact that this problem has made us become very happy people. Because now we found out that this, this excessive time leads to an increase in the burnout syndrome. The healthcare professionals are so overwhelmed with work, especially now due to COVID-19. Financial uh, pressure, because 50 billion euros are being used for medical education and public health. This is something that I, that I consider one of the most important things. Because especially due to COVID-19, the waiting lists are huge. And if you can reduce that uh, excessive time in the operating room and make it more uh, focus on providing care, then you will save more people's lives. This is something, isn't it? And then they said, okay, it's a good idea. That's very romantic. How do you monetize it? Again, business model canvas. And I thought, okay, smart classes, recording surgery, what's next? How can I actually monetize? And they were always telling me, digital, go digital, because no one wants to develop hardware. And I was very confused about it because digital, this was back in 2018. Anyway, digging deep, what are, what are we doing regarding share it with the medical community? At that time, I actually understood we are not doing anything? Are we allowing them to connect with each other? And actually, we're not. So this was actually the very basic beginning, the very beginning of Surgeon Mate Library, which is a database management app on a cloud-based service that will allow the doctors to have their own portfolio, right? When you go on vacations, what do you do? You take photos, you make videos, and you make tags. This can be as easy as that. Well, nonetheless, it's really not that easy just uh, a detail. It, it's not really that easy because we have a lot of issues to address. Privacy, actually, the GDPR was coming out and everyone was telling us, okay, digital are really saving patients uh, information. What about privacy? So we, we thought, okay, let's not face, this, face it as a deal breaker, but, that, but actually as a business advantage comparing to competitors. Okay, we carry it on. Now you, we, you can create your patient's profile and you can add multimedia content to it. The user can actually review their analytica, their statistics. Then 5G technology just came in and actually did all our homework because I remember defining surgeon-made system. 
as Skype for surgeons. How, who, who could tell uh, that nowadays it's so easy to understand because you have all video conferencing, all telework, work from, from home that is going on. But actually 5G did really help us. Why? Because now we could say that if you are in the operating room with our system, you can make a phone call a video phone call and can connect with all your colleagues. Doesn't matter where they are, doesn't matter where they want to be. Just like that. You can share a link and there you go. You can see what your colleague is seeing. And this is this has a huge impact because sometimes you have a hard case that you need to solve and you need someone to assist you, to help you, to guide you through the process. We don't know everything. Believe it or not, surgeons are just people. So 2019 brought us some, brought something to the world, COVID-19, and everything stopped. Everyone was very worried. You for sure remember clapping and cheering for the healthcare professionals, but everyone was so focused on healthcare professionals fighting COVID. No one actually asked, what is the other way around? What about medical education? They are already so overwhelmed fighting COVID-19. We need new solutions for the medical education. We definitely need new solutions. They have to be affordable, they have to be accessible, and they have to be reproducible. Okay, this is something, we're getting further. And then again, the guys from the money asked, how do you monetize these romantic thinking and these romantic ideas? And I have to be honest, at this moment in time, I was so, okay, hardware, we came around. Digital, we did come up with something. We even get telementoring. What else can we do? So they say, okay, define your value proposition. And at this time, I'm thinking, value proposition? What is that? Because as a surgeon, I know that my value proposition is to save people's lives. And that doesn't have actually an amount, a sum of money that you can just say, okay, I'm saving your life. This is my value proposition. Pay it. It doesn't happen like that. So Again, as a team, we have to go back. We had to analyze. We had to think. It was a huge push for me. As a surgeon, it was a huge shift, a huge, a huge change, because we're not so used to think about it like this. But then again, you, if you, well, to have an interpreter, you, you first of all have to be resilient. You have, to get, you have to have a good idea. You have to have a good product. It needs to save problems. And you have to be resilient, because you will have so many no's on your face, just like that, that you need to be resilient and you really need to think what you really want to do and if you want to change something. So, okay, we said, okay, a tool that allows the surgeons to create clinical records, multimedia content and to live broadcast. And they were like, okay, that's good, but still, what does it mean? And honestly, in my perspective, and this is the surgeon's perspective, we're so worried with accessibility to healthcare. We're so worried with having quality, healthcare with quality. Then this is actually the impact it can have because a system like this, an idea that I just had when I was doing an exchange could have an impact on the accessibility to healthcare. It would allow to democratize knowledge and to improve the learning experience. All of these together definitely improve the accessibility to healthcare with quality. And at a certain stage, I thought, okay, I need to, to carry on. And I just, okay, forget about the money. You have clients, you have a product, you have everything. Let's go, let's do something. Let's take that leap of faith. So we started to make a proper pilot. We use a head-mounted camera and an online streaming platform, all of it already available in the market. And we took it into the operating room. The surgeons were so thrilled, so excited with this. And it was amazing. The experience was just amazing. Actually, for me, it was that next step and that, that extra confidence that I was needing to take this to seriously. And you can see some evidence of that happening. This is a surgery uh, and watch out for the people who can might be sensitive. You won't see a lot of blood. You won't see a lot of blood. You will see mainly fat, to be honest, it's harmless. But this is one of the residents of the department I work at performing a surgery. He is doing everything. I promise you, this guy, after being able to review what he did, the next surgeries for the same problem, for the same disease, 
were definitely fast. So I was very happy to see this happening. And I thought, okay, let's take this to another level. Then we took this into the operating room for more serious surgeries. As you can see here, we are doing an online streaming and there is a surgeon taking out a thyroid gland and teaching other three surgeons that were in different cities uh, watching this procedure. And he was explaining how to do it. He was explaining step-by-step step how he did it so that these surgeons could have a better result, a better outcome. I'm gonna take it next. And now you might ask, what is a surgeon doing in a Python event? Is there any common ground? Well, whether you believe it or not, we're bonded. I do believe that Python has something to say about the future of the medical education. Thank you so much.